once winter day when we were living in Niagara about 1960, he phoned me and said, I'm Brian Doherty, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm very interested, I'm, he was a lawyer, you know, and I'm a lawyer, but theater is my main interest. And I, I'd like to start a theater in Niagara Lake, and I'd, I'd like you to help out and be part of it. So let's get together. So we got together, and that's how it started. But there was a group that he put together, and I think they're all pretty much gone. Brian had contacts, and because he worked in Niagara Falls and in St. Catharines, and there was the Niagara Falls Little Theater and the St. Catharines Little Theater. Little Theater means amateur weekend theater. And uh, he got to know some of those people. And that first season, even the second, the first season, I lived in New York and came up on weekends. No during the week, excuse me. I came up uh, during the summer on a weekend. Aside from that, we lived in New York City. But he lived there year-round, so he saw a lot of these things going on. And he drew on people from this, from this little theater. And the uh, first artistic director was, he worked for Carbron, never one of those companies. But he had experience in New York, so he became our first artistic guy. And he brought with him several members of the Niagara Falls Little Theater. The same thing in St. Catharines, the same thing in Welland. They all had these little amateur theater groups. So Brian started off contacting them, and they formed sort of a nucleus of the their first season, which was um, just a reading. We read Shaw, Man and Superman, and. Um, on four weekends, in the summer of 1960, I think, 1960, in the courthouse. It was fiendishly hot, there was no air conditioning in there, and people walked out, they couldn't stand the heat, it was just awful. I remember it. People used to come out the door gagging. <laughs> so the second year we had to um, rent some window air conditioning units, which was so loud you couldn't hear the actors, so that was put, they, they put that on in, during the intermission. But still, it was pretty bad. The local audience, and um, Dorothy Middleton, she, Dorothy Middleton was an English lady, a real powerhouse lady. And she knew a lot of the audience, she said, if it, if it, if I had not spread the word, you wouldn't have anyone here, because the English people love to go to the theater, and they don't care how hot it is, how uncomfortable the seats were, they came. So that was a large part of the audience. I think that's cool, because there were wooden seats, and there were no cushion seats, just those church seats which were brought in, set up. So the small, small audience, say a couple hundred people. But they came back for the, the second, there was this reading of Don Juan and Hell, which is long, difficult piece, which was read. But the second piece there was Canada. And Canada's a regular play, as you know, it's a nice play. And the woman who played Canada was another one of these uh, <clears throat> local ladies from St. Catharines. I'll think of her name. But she was very good. And she's still around. Every now and then I see her. I saw her last summer somewhere. No, I can't remember her name, but I may remember. It's worth remembering. Because <clears throat> she helped things along, and she was a very, very nice lady and a very good actress. So she played Canada, which everyone liked. <clears throat> and then the second season, we decided that we can't go along like this anymore. We've got to get some real professional things. So we got a professional company from Toronto. <clears throat> The leading guy was a Shavian actor by the name of Andrew Allen, and he was our first artistic director. And Andrew put together a uh, a good season, a short season of three weeks, one week for each play, in the courthouse, and then we had uh, uh, fans of some sort in there. It was the coolest season. That first season was one of those really hot, hot, hot July days. But we had fans of some sort anyway, and 
that was a very quite a well received season. His first play was You Never Can Tell, which was they did a very, very good job of You Never Can Tell. Better than it was done many years later, twice. And um, two short plays. And the third play was Androcles and the Lion. Brian Doherty, who was always very clever, he put an ad in the St. Catherine's paper that wanted early Christians. Because all the background people are early Christians. So anyway, that, that, was, a good, that was a good season, that, that second year, first professional year. The town never supported it very much. The locals, the, the council, we had to rent the courthouse each year for many years to put it on. And during that first season, most of the councilors said, well, if it's theater, what does that mean? Who's in the theater? Why, why should we bother tying it up? Someone might want to use it and so on and so on. This went on and on. And the council ended up with a tie vote. You know who the mayor that year was who, who broke the tie? Jerry Will. And he'd never been to a theater in his life. He didn't care, but he thought it was a good thing for now. <laughs> so that was great. So from then on, the council saw this as a good thing for the town. And there was no talk of tourism, that sort of thing, in those days. That came later. And that was a major development. When the federal government, government decided to make Niagara Lake a tourist destination, they rebuilt Fort George, <clears throat> did all sorts of things. But in those days, there wasn't any. And they began the studies, and when we built the new theater in 73, we used a lot of these studies, which were tourism studies, to raise money. And the, and the government was very helpful in helping us do that.